This is a native line chart visual. But with the presence of the new button slicer, we can add these checkboxes to enable such amazing functionalities to dynamically add or remove fields. To enable these features, you need to apply little tricks. In this video, I am going to create this checkbox slicer from the scratch. Let's do that. All right, here I have this native line chart, which is showing daily closing price of the selected sample stocks. My data set is pretty simple, which has these informations. I want to add daily moving averages for different periods, but I want to utilize the new button slicer to dynamically add these fields with amazing checkboxes. Another thing is, I want to also add the total volume information as bars from the same slicer set. I will explain how to do that. But before that, I will create these measures. To save some time, let's utilize Copilot option from Quick Measures. So I will click on Quick Measure and select Suggestion with Copilot. And here I will type 30 days moving average and click on Generate. You have to be very careful while using Copilot for authoring such DAX measures. Here it didn't understand the base measure to calculate moving average, so it is just counting the unique dates. Here I have mentioned 30 days moving average, but I have not given any other context. I will mention moving average of closing price. If you are using Copilot, make sure to double check the expression and the results. Now I can add this measure to my model and rename it as 30 DMA. Similarly, I can create my other two measures or I can just copy this expression and use it to create 60 days moving average and 90 days moving average where I just need to change the number of days inside my expressions. All right, at this stage, you have to be very careful. I don't only need lines for moving averages, but I also need bars for total volume. A single field parameter cannot do this job. Let me show you how to create this entire functionality. First of all, click on the modeling tab and create a field parameter. Then add all the required measures, which you want to use in the slicer. For example, I am adding my all three moving averages and the total volume measure. This slicer will be added automatically but I need to change this to new slicer, which is recently added in Power BI native visual list. Before I apply my trick, let me format this slicer. Such formatting options are not available in the old slicer. For example, I will mention how many rows and column I need in this slicer. Disable the border and title. For now, let's leave like that. And I will apply further formatting with checkboxes in a moment. The second step is to change this visual type from line chart to cluster column chart with line. For column Y axis, I can use my total volume measure. But what will I do for lines? Can I use my field parameter? Let's use and understand the problem. As that you can see, it is changing the measure based on selection. But I don't need a line for total volume. When total volume option is selected, I need to show the columns. So how to solve this problem? It seems I need to modify our DAX measures. Let me first remove these fields. After that, I will edit my measures. For example, in this 30 DMA measure, I will validate if parameter is filtered and the parameter order contains zero, which is the ordinal for this measure, then only it should calculate below expression. Similarly, I will add this condition to each of my measures, where I will only make sure that it should only work when the ordinal value is same. If you are confused, why am I doing this? then you will understand in a while. Since I can't use this parameter directly, I will use it in a different way. All right. Now again in the column Y axis, I will use the total volume measure. And for the lines, I will not use the parameter. Rather than that, I will use each individual measures. Let's verify how it looks. As that you can see, it is working as expected. It is showing the lines for moving averages and columns for total volume. Now I got the functionality working. So without further ado, let me tell you how to convert them as checkboxes using the latest features of the new slicer. For that, I need to create a small custom table. The table name I can keep as metric. I will add the column, which will hold the names of my measures and the exact same ordinal values as it is available in my parameter table. Now go to the data model view and create relationship between parameter table and the metric table using the ordinal columns. Select the newly created slicer, and from the formatting option, go to Label, and add the metric value in its field area. Align it at the center. Next, I will go to the expressions of my field parameter. And here, I will remove these names, 
and I will replace them with the required checkbox emoji. I can copy this and use it for all the measures used in this field parameter. At this moment, it won't work like checkboxes. And I need to apply some of the amazing formatting features available for this new slicer. First of all, I will disable the fill option. And from the callout section, for default state, make the text color completely transparent. And for the selected state, set the transparency as zero. Make sure that the label color is not white for the selected state. With that, our checkbox slicer is ready for use. And it is now working as expected. If required, you can format these lines and place your checkbox slicer at the appropriate place. You can also use bookmarks to show or hide the slicers. For that, I can just insert one shape, place it here and format it. If required, you can also mention some text inside it, then insert one more shape. Finally, to create bookmarks, I can open the selection pane and hide and unhide these shapes and slicer for two different bookmarks. For example, I am hiding one shape, uncheck all the options, go to bookmark section, and we'll create this bookmark. I can also disable the data option. For another bookmark, I can hide the slicer and another shape and create the second bookmark. Now from the action option of each of the shapes, I can use these bookmarks. Bookmarks are amazing in Power BI. But in this video, our focus is to create the checkbox slicer. This is just an add-on to the functionality. All right, we are now ready with our solution. I can publish it to the service. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for many such interesting videos on Power BI. Post your feedbacks and suggestions in comment box.